Welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to be working out these six indefinite integral examples. So let's dive into it. All of these will require you to use the power rule of integration. So let me show you how that works. Here's the power rule of integration. So if you're integrating, say, um, x to the power n, where n is any real number but negative 1, so this is equal to x to the n plus 1 divided by the power n plus 1 plus the constancy because it's an indefinite. There's no limit of the integration. So this is what we call an indefinite integral or antiderivative of x to the n power. And of course, we're assuming n it's not negative 1 because then we have a different rule for that case. So for the first problem, we are integrating x plus 1. So this can be written as the integral of x dx plus the integral of 1 dx. You can separate it into two separate integral because of the plus sign in the middle. So the integral of x, well, using that rule above, you know this is an exponent 1. So you add 1 to the power, and the same power goes on the bottom. So this is equal to, so the first integral is x squared over 2, plus now the second integral right here. Now that one, think of um, you have x to the 0 power, because x to the 0 is just that constant. So you add 1 to the power, so x comes into the picture. So that will be x, and then over 1, or you can just write simply x. And of course, plus c, because it's indefinite. Now just to throw out the 1 from the second term, I can write this as 1 half x squared plus x plus constant c. So that's the antiderivative of this function or the integral of this function. Let's do the same thing for the second problem. Now, if you want, you can integrate each term. So integrate this one, integrate that one, and integrate that one. I'm going to split them up into three separate integral. So you see how the properties of integration is applied. So if you have a plus or minus in the middle, you split them into different um, pieces of integral. So the first, we're integrating 1 respect to x. Then the negative sign, I can put it outside the integral. And we're doing x squared dx. And again, negative integral of 3x to the fifth dx. Now, here's the question. You might want to pull this 3 out as well if you want. But let's keep it there for now. It's totally up to you. Constants can all be pulled outside the uh, integration symbol. So again, integral of 1 respect to x. Again, think of you have x to the 0 power. You add 1 to the power, you get x minus. Now for the second term, you add 2 to the power. So you, sorry, you add 2 to 1. So that's 3. And then the same power goes on the bottom. Minus the last one. So you have 3, but you're integrating x to the fifth. So that again, like I said, the constant can be pulled outside. So you can just write it like that. You're integrating x to the fifth. So again, you add 1 to the power, that's x to the sixth, same power goes on the bottom. Now, because again, it's indefinite, we tag along plus c, constant. So keep going with this. Now simplify it, and then that's your final answer. So this is equal to x minus 1 third x cubed and 3 over 6, that's 1 half x to the 6 plus c. So that is our integral of this function or the antiderivative of this function. Now let's look at the last one. Now this one, again, you want to use the power rule, but the this term is not written in terms of power. So you want to bring the exponent on top, make it into a power form. So you rewrite. So rewrite into power form. So the first, we have the integral of 1 over x squared dx minus, then we have the integral of x squared dx, and then last, we have the integral of 1 third dx. So I separated them like that. Now, 1 over x squared, by using laws of exponents, that x to the negative 2 dx. And the next ones, you can start integrating them. For instance, the integral of this, you add 1 to the power, same power goes on the bottom, so that's minus x to the third over 3. And the last one, this one right here, that integral, again, it's 1 third, is a constant. So think of you have 1 third x to the 0 power. You add 1 to the power, 
So then this is three, one third X. And then you could tag along plus C, but I'm gonna hold on until I finish this. So using the power rule for that piece, we're going to get, so you add a one to the power and then that same power goes on the bottom. So I don't wanna write it right there, but let's integrate that. So that will be X to the negative one over negative one. And then you rewrite the rest. So we have negative X cubed over three minus one third X plus the integration constancy. And just clearing up the negative sign, I can write this as negative one over X because X to the negative one is, you can rewrite it as one over X minus one third X cubed minus one third X plus the constant C. So that will be our answer to this particular problem. Now let's go ahead and finish up the last three examples. For these three problems, we are still gonna use the power rule. So we wanna make sure we represent uh, each term as a power of something. So for instance, if you look at the first one here, you would um, have to rewrite, so rewrite because we're still not able to use the power rule because it looks like a radical. So radicals, you can rewrite them. So let's um, split up the integral first. So um, first one, x to the one half, because square root means it's a one half power over two dx plus the integral of two. Now this one, I'm gonna bring this on top. So then it's gonna have a negative one half power, x to the minus one half dx. The reason I wanna do that, because we wanna use the power rule of integration. All right, now let's use the rule. We add one to the power. So if I add half plus one, well, common denominator, that gives me three over two. So the first term, well, gives me an exponent of three over two. Well, there is a half from before. Let's just pull it out, this one. And then all over three over two. And then, you know, you get a plus C, but let's hold on to that. We're gonna plug in plus C at the end. Plus, now do the same thing for the second one. We have negative half, so let's do that on the side. And we're adding one to it. That'll give you a positive half because you multiply this two over two. So we have a two from before, and then we are doing the integration of x to the negative one half. That'll be x to the one half over same power. And now we can tag along the constant of integration. And now let's simplify it. So uh, one half times, now X to the three half over three half, that same thing as reciprocating the power. So it's gonna be two over three times X to the three half. Keep change, flip. And then for the second one, we have two times, now X to the one half to the one, or one half on the bottom, the same thing as two over one, then X to the one half plus C. Now, if you simplify the numbers, for the first one, the two will cancel out. For the second one, these will multiply. So you'll have one third x to the three half plus four x to the one half plus c. So that will be our answer to this problem. All right, now let's go ahead and try the next one. So if you want, pause the video and then check your answer with mine. Let's finish up this problem. So here again, you wanna turn each of these terms into power since we don't have a rule for product. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna distribute the exponent to everything uh, inside the parentheses term. So you have the integral of x to the negative three half times x plus x to the negative three half times one. And we're integrating respect to x. Now by laws of exponents, when you're multiplying same base, you add the exponent. So this has exponent one. So negative three plus one, that would be negative two. So this is x to the negative two. Plus the second one, well, it's just x to the negative three times one. That's just x to the negative three dx. Now let's integrate using the power rule. So we add one to the power for the first one, x to the negative two plus one, that's x to the negative one over negative one plus 
Again, the second one, we add one to the power, x to the negative two over negative two, plus the constant c. And then we, of course, simplify these by making the exponents positive. So that means all of these will move downstairs. So our final answer is negative one over x. The second one is negative one over two x squared plus c. So that will be our final answer for this problem. Here's our last example. So again, you wanna represent it as a power. So I'm gonna uh, separate the terms with a t to the third on the bottom. So again, rewrite. So you have four over t to the third. So t is again, is a dummy variable. You can treat it as x if you like, plus the square root of t over t cubed. And then we're integrating respect to t. So then I'm gonna turn the first term into a power. So this is four t to the negative three. The second one, we're gonna play around with a little. So you have square root of t, which is t to the one half. And then you have t to the three on the bottom, which is t to the negative three on top. Now again, same base, just like the previous problem. Here we add their exponent. So we're doing one half plus negative three, which is just one half minus three. Put them in common denominator. So times by two over two, this is one minus six over two. That's negative five over two. So that's the exponent for that second term. So we have plus t to the power negative five over two. And of course, integrating. So we're just rewriting. You rewrite until you know how to use power rule for these type of problems. So now using the integration rule, we add one to the power. So for the first one, four t to the negative three plus one, that's four t to the negative two divided by negative two. And the second one, since it's a fraction, we'll work it on the side negative five half plus one using common denominators, two over two. So for negative five plus two, that's negative three over two. So this is t to the negative three over two over negative three over two plus c. And of course we simplify. So four over negative two, that's negative two, t to the negative two. Well, I'm gonna put minus since I'm gonna reciprocate the bottom fraction. So that's two over three, t to the negative three over two plus c. Now you can rewrite the negative exponents as positive exponents, just simply putting them on the bottom. So the first term is negative two over t squared. The second term is negative two over three t to the three half plus c. So that is our antiderivative for this function or the integration of this given function. So rewriting is very important. So make sure to do that. Once it is in the power form, then apply the anti-differentiation rule. All right, so uh, I hope this makes sense.